I'd like to thank everyone for coming out to London City Council meeting. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silent reflection. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, could you please take the roll call? Russell? Here. Peters? Here. Robinson? Here. Hayes? Present? Hit? Here. Laser? Here. Smith? Here. All right. We have everyone here this evening for our last meeting. Okay. And has everyone had a chance to take a look at the minutes from our last meeting? Yes. All right. Any corrections or changes? All in favor of approving those minutes, say aye. 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 All right. Opposed, same sign. All right. The minutes carry. Communications and, and announcements. Uh, this evening we will be uh, swearing in our council members for the next session for 2022. So let's see here. We have a we have different ways that we're going to do this. So if you uh, would like to be sworn in with the group, please stand, and I'll put you down here. Richard M. Hayes. You solemnly swear and affirm. You solemnly, solemnly swear and affirm. Subject to the penalties for perjury. Subject, subject to the penalties for perjury. That I will. That I that will. Support the Constitution of the United States. Support the Constitution of the United States. In this state. And in this state. And the ordinances of the city of London. And the ordinances of the city of London. Not to be influenced. Not to be, not influenced, be influenced by any consideration. By any consideration. Except that of merit. Except that of merit. And fitness in appointment. And fitness of appointment. Or discharge of employee. Or discharge of employee. Not make or authorize. Not make or authorize. The expenditure of public money. The expenditure of public money. Otherwise than for adequate. Otherwise, and for adequate, adequate consideration and efficient service, consideration and efficient service to the city of London, to the, to the city, city of London, London. faithfully, faithfully, <laughs> honestly, honestly, and impartially, and impartially, discharge the duties of the city council for the city of London, discharge the duties of the city council for the city of London. Thank you. 
I don't need to. Do you solemnly swear or affirm? Do you solemnly swear or affirm? Subject to the penalties of per for perjury. Subject to the penalties of perjury. That I will. That I will. Support the Constitution of the United States. Support the Constitution of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. And the ordinances of the city of London. And the ordinances of the city of London. Not to be influenced by consideration. Not to be influenced by consideration. Except that of merit. Except that of merit. And fitness. And fitness. And the appointment or discharge. And the appointment or discharge. Of employees. Of employees. Not make or authorize. Not make or authorize. The expenditure of public money. The expenditure of public money. Otherwise than for adequate. Otherwise than for adequate. Cons consideration. Consideration. And efficient service. And efficient service. To the city of London. To the city of London. Faithfully. Faithfully. Honestly. Honestly. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge. Discharge. The duties of city council. The duties of city council. For the city of London. For the city of London. And we all, I uh, also will be swearing in Mr. Hayes later this, this evening, but that's in a different room. All right, on to, let's see here, we don't have any other announcements. On to our audience concerns. And this evening we do have uh, quite a few, so we will limit you to two minutes. And when I uh, say your name, please come to the podium and state your name and address. And then you'll have two minutes. All right, first we have uh, Megan Douglas. My name is Megan Douglas. I live at 161 East 1st Street, London, Ohio. Tonight I am not here to discuss past legislate legislation. Instead, I would like to address a point of order I noticed at the last meeting and continue to notice tonight. I provided you with a copy of your website page. It reads in part, each person wishing to address council will be given five minutes for their address. The slide that you show prior to this meeting also says citizens will have five minutes to address the council. Why then have you changed your rule to two minutes? At your last meeting, many of you said that you welcome people's participation, wish that they would come more often, and thank them for coming out. But those are really hollow sentiments, aren't they? If you truly valued their input, as you claim you do, you'd allow them their full five minutes to speak instead of making up arbitrary and capricious new rules simply because you don't like what they had to say. None of these people are professional orators. They are just average people who took the time out of their day to come to participate in what is still our republic, Despite a certain faction of people trying to destroy it, where they still have a voice as enumerated in the Bill of Rights to peacefully assemble and petition their government for a redress of grievances. They came to speak to you so they would know that their voice was being heard instead of sending an email or voicemail that could just be deleted, unread, or unheard. As far as I can see, these people have not been nothing but civil and have abided by your arbitrary rules you've made up as you went along, yet you insist on disenfranchising them with our government system by cutting them out of the process simply because you don't want to hear the criticism of your actions or because you want a nice short meeting. How quickly you've forgotten that you're public servants, and these are some of the people that you represent. It seems to me that you only want them to participate in government when it suits you, when you need their signature for their petition and their vote in November. Some of you were called cowards last meeting and didn't, so well, didn't sit well with you. Let me first sincerely thank you for your service to our country and our community. Um, but, let, but just because you've done heroic things in the past doesn't make you immune from a moment of cowardice in the future. After all, Benedict Arnold was a national war hero before he betrayed his country. I believe the true cowardice lies in not allowing your constituents to speak and following your own rules. This is still a free country where we have the innate, inalienable right to speak freely, even if you don't like what we have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Michael Norman. Uh, Michael Norman, thank you. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me 
and speak this evening. My name is Michael W. Norman. I live at 188 South Oak Street here in the great city of London. Uh, I think I'm on a totally different page tonight than some of the others here. Listen, I came here to talk about you guys um, tonight. Uh, this is the last meeting of the year. And, you know, I've been to these committee meetings and we've been told this has been a hard thing. Well, I, I'd like to expand that and say it's been a hard year and a half. Uh, with the COVID and how we've had to deal with it and how you guys have had to change how you do things. And uh, so I just want to say that I'm proud of every single person that's sitting up there, no matter what side of this you were on. I'm proud of every single person, how you, re, you know, reacted to us and treated us. I think you've treated us fair. Uh, this whole two minute thing, it's been going on forever. So I don't know why it's a big deal now, but it's been going on. And my last thing is I wish that um, because this is the last meeting, I wish that you all would just, when you leave here tonight, leave the city business here. Go home, enjoy the holiday with your families, with your, you know, go out for a drive, look at the lights, turn on Mariah Carey, so all I want for Christmas is me, <laughs> or you. And, uh, you know, just leave this behind because, you know, it's still gonna be here next year. So, you know, just have a good holiday, and that's for everybody in the room but specifically for you guys. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, uh, Anita Likens. Please state your name and address. And you have two minutes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Anita Likens, 157 East 1st Street. And thank you for your service <coughs> and for providing the residents a chance to be heard during city council and committee meetings specifically over the last two months, for the hearing reviews on the Sanctuary City legislation. I have attended, I have listened. Over the last few months, I've also heard comments expressed by council on the civility displayed. I think we're all finding ourselves pretty much appalled at the deterioration and bottom line on the lack of common courtesy and civility in our current society. That's probably why it's even being warranted to being ad admitted that it happened. But here I stand, again being civil and sharing my observations again. But what is civility? Merriam-Webster definition confirms courtesy and politeness. But there is the older use, as I mentioned last time, the archaic use of civil. In the earliest sense of Middle English and Middle French, it's relating to citizens. Hence, civil war, civil disobedience, civil service. So it focuses on the common good of society. <coughs> So, so here I stand, again, in the fullest sense of civility. And so stood my great-grandfather, William Strasburg, in civility. On August 28, 1862, he joined the Maryland 7th Infantry to fight as a Union soldier in the Civil War. He was a poor farmer. He left his family, his farm. He risked life and limb. He was resolute. He stayed until the war was over. He mustered out June 9th. 1865 after uh, the uh, grand review of the armies in Washington, D.C. He started a poor farmer. He died a poor farmer. There was no glory. There was no position. There was no financial gain. He fought, not for himself, but for the common good of society. He saw injustice and he stood. So civilly, here I stand. And I stand against injustice as my great-grandfather did. Not because I have anything to gain, but because we have everything to lose. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have Phyllis Hicks. Is it all possible? I'd like to give my time to um, George Hill. George, okay. Uh, and so when we get to George Hill, okay. Uh, let's see here. M Marilyn. Okay. And so you're Mar you're Maryland, correct? Right. Okay. George Schwartz. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here tonight. <laughs> My name is George Schwartz. I live at 9025 Pringle Benjamin Road, London, Ohio. I agree with everything pro-life speakers said at the last meeting on December 2nd, 
But simply put, I do not believe there was no collusion among council members to move the vote to November 18th. We were told that the vote would be taken on December 2nd at that council meeting. Now, you all claim there was no collusion or talking among a group of yourselves or the mayor about this. We are not upset that we lost the vote on 207-21. Disappointed, yes. What we are angry about is the shell game you played with the vote date and deciding early on you would vote it down. Indeed, that was quite the dog and pony show you put on at the November 8th meeting. The proposal to suspend the third reading, the instant first and second to vote, allowed no time for anyone to protest. Only Mr. Smith showed any sign of surprise. We sat there in stunned silence. I listened to many of you claim to be personally pro-life, whatever that is. At the finance meeting, one of you said as much, then followed it by saying, quote, if my daughter or granddaughter had an unwanted pregnancy, I would take her to an abortion clinic. I don't care how you spin it. That is not being pro-life. I heard council members who claim to be conservative Republican Christians make statements that could have easily been written by those who support abortion on demand or even copied from the Planned Parenthood website. If you think we have been hard on you for the way you blindsided us, I can assure you St. Paul would have spoken much harder words. As for the division in this country, that is due to a fateful and misguided ruling of the SCOTUS in 1973 and again in 1993. As for all of you who voted against 207-21, we now know that it was a setup from the get-go. Shame on all of you for being dishonest and then trying to cover your butts when exposed. Now I know that one bad decision, one lie, one time you didn't take the high road is not the defining moment in anyone's life. We have all at some time in our lives done things we are not proud of, we would like to do over if we could. In closing, I will say, all things happen for a reason. So we will support any person who promises honesty, integrity, and transparency and runs for this city council in the future. Audie Murphy once said, in combat, a man can be a hero and a coward, and that in the same day. Mr. Smith has graciously asked Mr. Comer to retract his false statement that there were only a sprinkling of folks for 207-21. I pray he takes wise counsel and does so. Roe versus Wade will be overturned one day, God willing. All things in God's perfect time, God's will be done in all things. God bless London, Ohio, and God bless America. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Schwartz, if you want to quote me, you should do it properly. I did say I'm against abortion as a means of birth control. I said that if my minor, young minor daughter or granddaughter was raped and became pregnant, I would be the first one in line with her to get an abortion. That's what I said. Well, first of all, I Excuse, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, when you address council, you want to address council as a whole, so we we can't address each separate uh, council member. Okay, and and, and okay, okay. All right, thank you. Next, we have uh, Stephen Miller. All right. Please state your name, address, and you have two minutes, please. Thanks, uh, Stephen Miller, 225 Jenkinson Avenue, Ward 3. Um, oh, I actually uh, didn't want to talk about really anything that happened in the last meeting or anything like that. I watched it on the YouTube, which I appreciate you guys putting up there. Uh, what I really want to talk about was uh, our uh, Ward 3 meeting that we're going to have on the, uh, this next Saturday. Uh, it's at uh, 10 a.m., I believe, in one of these rooms over here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's for the grant for the $750,000, I believe. Um, you know, we're tr that, that grant's not guaranteed. It's going to take community support. Um, one of the things that I really want is, uh, you know, Brenda's uh, park project to succeed. And then 
uh, hopefully with you know the ward three money we can we can get some sidewalks or or some drainage or something we'll we'll find out what that is it's going to be if nobody's there it's going to be me deciding so i'd like <laughs> i know you guys don't want that <laughs> so uh, but i would like to say you know i'm an independent i'm not a republican um and uh as an independent watching republicans i'm sitting back and laughing okay so um you know, I love what Anthony did with the trash. I have to tell you that, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not liking. You know, obviously, I didn't like 207. But um, just so you know, with the comments being made by Republican leadership, as an independent, I'm sitting back laughing. So, thank you. Thank you. All right. Next, we have Greg Eads. Good evening, I'm Greg Eads, 21 Westmore Drive, London, Ohio. Since I'm not on council yet, but I will be, um, I have been watching the meetings, I have been reading the ordinances, and uh, so tonight it just caught my attention. There's a lot of business I didn't expect to see on the last meeting of the year. Um, a lot of us cleaning up things, I think. Um, but I've seen 226-21, which is referenced as a resolution creating a job description. So I went on and online and looked. Hopefully you guys all have too. Uh, a couple things came to mind for this, if I were on council, that maybe I would have said or questioned. Um, although this, I think, was probably a very needed position. The city's operated for 100 and, or 200, or bicentennial, 210 years um, without an assistant street superintendent. I don't know that there's a need to rush through this tonight by suspending the rules. As I looked at the, uh, the paperwork that went with this, it referenced Ohio Revised Code 124.11, Section A, 3C, whatever that was. It's referenced on the paperwork that you have. Um, I decided to take a quick peek at that and look at that. Um, and it mentions that this is a exempt position. And so exempt from, uh, I believe, overtime. And then an unclassified position under 124-11. When I looked at 124-11, or .11 AC3, um, it does reference unclassified, but it mentions very specifically department heads, not an assistant. So I just hope that you guys take the time to look at this and make sure that you've made doing the right thing, classifying, unclassifying, moving forward, and not rushing through this just to try to pass it tonight uh, when I don't know that that needs to happen. Um, I, I would like to recognize Ms. Megan Douglas. I believe she was probably the youngest council member ever to serve on city council. And, you know, she comes up and, and makes reference to um, the times being changed. I think she has a viewpoint when she says that because she had served on council. I hope to uh, work with you all in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next we have Brendan Shea. Good evening, Brennan Shea, 60 Logan Avenue. Firstly, I'd like you to know that despite my deep disappointment about what's transpired over the last month, my family and I continue to pray for the Lord's blessing upon each of you and upon the city of London, which we love so dearly. And that's precisely why I will continue to speak the truth about what transpired and to stand up for the most vulnerable among us, the unborn. I appreciated President Comer saying last meeting that he would consider retracting his November 18th comments that the overwhelming number of people were not for the sanctuary city legislation and that only a sprinkling of people were for it. President Comer raised some questions that I'd like to address. The first regards how many testified at committee meetings. I requested the October and November minutes from the safety service and finance committees. I acknowledge that the November minutes will still need to be approved at the January meeting it doesn't list addresses, so I've included all speakers at the committee meetings as London residents. As far as I can tell, each side had two or three individuals who were likely non-residents. According to the minutes, seven community members spoke in favor, while five spoke against at the committee meetings. Updating my numbers from last time, the grand total of London residents who registered an opinion with council 
was 39 in favor, 36 in person, 3 via email, and 27 opposed, 16 in person, 11 via email. That's 39 in support and 27 opposed among London residents who weighed in. So hopefully that addresses the first question. I have provided another picture this evening which shows the October 7th March for Life gathering at the courthouse to march proudly in support of the sanctuary city legislation. I walked a lot alongside these folks to the council meeting that night. Whether or not one chooses to accept the obvious fact that the pro-lifers in this picture were the same people depicted in the picture I provided last time of the crowd at council that evening, there's no denying that the 75 pro-lifers you see depicted before you is certainly not a mere sprinkling of support for the sanctuary city legislation. At last meeting, Mr. Michael Norman, the member of the public who attended and spoke most frequently against the sanctuary city legislation, acknowledged being in the minority when he said, quote, I do agree with them on this, Mr. Comer, that I did go to these meetings, and I do want to clarify that I felt, and this is my feeling only, that I was the underdog in most of those meetings. I felt that being against this, I was the underdog. Just like right now, I feel I'm the underdog here, and I feel and I understand where they're coming from from that. Once again, those were the words of London resident Michael Norman. So given the empirical evidence, the photographic evidence, and the anecdotal evidence I have shared tonight, the following statement by President Comer from November 18th simply does not comport with the reality of what transpired. Quote, we had an overwhelming majority of people who, through emails, through Facebook, through presence in council meetings, that were not for this legislation. We've heard it over and over. We've heard it through the committee, and we've had a sprinkling of people who were for this, unquote. For me, this is not about President Comer. Please understand that. We all make mistakes, and while that was a significant misstatement, it can be corrected, and that would go a long way. This is about having an accurate record of what transpired and where London residents were and are on this issue, because this is not going away. It will come back. Regardless of what the Supreme Court decides in the Dobbs case, this issue and these decisions are not going away. I and countless others will not stop fighting on behalf of all children, including those who reside in their mother's wombs. And my interest is to ensure that when this comes up again, whether it's next year or next decade, the record accurately reflects that in 2021, more London residents weighed in in support of rather than opposed to making London a sanctuary city for the unborn. So, President Comer, again, I respectfully request that you retract the statement I quoted. A lot more I'd like to say. Look forward to continuing next time. I pray everyone a very blessed and Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. And to repeat what I said in the, the last meeting, there's no way that you could say uh, exactly what uh, side everyone voted on. There were people there who didn't speak. You have no idea what side they were on. So you can't tell either way. You could say you had this person or that person who spoke out, but you can't say for those people who did not speak out what side of the issue they were on. So that's where I stand on it. Thank you. Uh, ne exactly, so it's not provable. Thank you. Uh, next on to committee reports, uh, Mrs. Russell. Oh. Okay, I attended, we had a finance meeting and uh, Megan, I'd like to address you. Although we did change the rule here at council, we also changed the rule in committee. We gave people opportunity to, to speak. When in committee, we do not have to. But in both of the finance committees and the safety committee, we did give public time to speak. So, you know, we, we, we kind of weighed it out. So it wasn't just a sneaky, underhanded, uh, cowardly, manipulative way to uh, maneuver what we wanted. Uh, so, you know, we changed the rule in council and we changed it in committee. So. But you changed it arbitrarily because yeah. you kind of posted several places. Well, sometimes decisions, you, you know, it would really, really be great if nothing came up and we had three weeks to decide on it, if we had uh, 10 weeks to make the decisions, but at times that's not true. Sometimes we have to act immediately on things in what we think is the best interest. And that's what President Comer did. He thought at that time to give people ample, 
time to speak and concerning time too. It was a time issue too because people work. People, we don't know what people have to do. So it was in consideration of people and it's a decision that he's allowed to make. I, it, is he allowed to make that? Yeah. As a matter of fact, change? according to No, I'm not done yet, Henry. Okay, I was going to say okay, I just I have a, is he allowed to, if he's allowed yeah. to do that, mm -hmm. yep. then he, then we're allowed to do that. There are some things that we can do that we are allowed to do. And he's allowed to do some things as president. It doesn't mean we're sneaking. It does I am so tired of being called sneaky, dishonest, and underhanded. I am so you you don't want to know why nobody's on the ballot to run for these positions is because that's what we get. That's the treatment we get. Nobody, you have, you, that's your opinion that we're sneaky, dishonest, that you don't choose to believe us, that's fine. That's fine, but you, you're, you're going to get to a point where nobody's going to want to run because of the tree that we get. No respect at all. And you sit back there and grin. Every time we're called coward, dishonest, they, you sit back there and grin. Now, I, for one, I'm so glad I'm saved or we'd be in a fight. And that's all I got to say. I am, I'm just, and this is my last meeting. <laughs> this is my last meeting because I didn't get reelected. And congratulations to John and to Greg. And, but we're not dishonest. We're not sneaking. I can't remember one thing that we undermindedly did. I can't, I can't think of one. Maybe I'm missing one. I don't know. But I, I can't think of one. So on with the finance report. Okay. Auditor's report. The November books closed out successfully. And our auditors are working on the closing year-end reports for 2021. Ohio checkbook is up and running. It just slipped through. It just slipped through the cracks. That's all. It, it wasn't nothing sneaky. We wasn't trying to hide anything. Out of the many things that the auditors got to do, you know she's a new auditor in her second year, came right in when we was getting a new system, and it just slipped through the cracks. It just, it just didn't get updated, just plain old, honestly, slipped through the cracks. And as soon as it was brought to her attention, she got right with it. Nothing sneaky, nothing underhanded about it at all. Okay, on with the finance report. Uh, the city will stay with their current health provider, but there will be a 22% increase in the cost. So that will need to be added into the budget. So there it was. <laughs> that's a lot. Of, that's, a, mm. uh, that, that's a lot. That's a lot. Okay, an old business. Uh, there will be some changes in the budget uh, and. That'll be up in legislation because we got the union contracts that went through. We have to figure in the raises and what they got and this health insurance increase and all of that. So there will be some changes to the 2022 budget. Uh, and we'll let you know what they are at the, uh, when we go into legis uh, legislative part. Okay, and the fire department has some legislation and uh, that will be uh, brought up has some information be brought up in legislation, also the street department. And uh, uh, Greg, we will look into the wording. We will look into the wording of the, whether uh, the department heads are non-union exempt. We, we will look into the wording of it. Okay. 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 Now let's go. Okay. The treasury report in general, we were up three and a half percent for the month, 14% for the year. Fire department up 6.98% for the month, up 24% for the year. And uh, I think that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Let's see here. One to uh, Mr. Peter. Do you have it? I attended the finance meeting, and uh, Brenda went over that. Okay. Mr. Robinson? I have nothing at this time. Okay. Mr. Hayes? Uh, we're supposed to have a safety meeting this past Tuesday. Uh, I was unable to attend, as was Mr. Hitt. We did not have a quorum, so we could not have a meeting. Next safety meeting will be January 11th, 2022. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hitt? You have nothing. All right. This is Blazer. Um, I attended the finance meeting, but uh, nothing to add to what Brenda reported. Okay. And Mr. Smith? 
Um, I don't have much. Uh, the next BPU meeting will be December 23rd, 6.30 p.m. All right, thank you. Uh, city official reports, the city, okay. All right, on to uh, old business. Uh, I'd like to move to enter to an executive session to consider employment and compensation of public employees. And in the session, I invite Rex Castle and, and uh, Bill Long. And would you like to have uh, Kenna come as well? Kenneth, do we want Kenna? Yeah. Kenna. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have a motion. Second. Second. And clerk, please take roll call. Russell? Yes. Peters? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hitt? Yes. Blazer? Yes. Smith? Yes. All right. Our session's adjourned. Now we return to our regular council meeting. Like a motion to exit our executive session. Make a motion to executive exit executive session and re-enter general council meeting. I second. Clerk, right. please take the roll call. Russell. Yes. Peters. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Hayes. Yes. Hit. Yes. Laser. Yes. Smith. Yes. Okay. Uh, so now we are uh, back to our old business on the fourth reading. Um, amend Amended uh, ordinance 21421, motion to read by Tyler Number. So moved. Second. All right, please read the ordinance. Amended ordinance 21421, sponsored by Brenda Russell, an ordinance to make appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures of the City of London, State of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2022. Okay, this is the 2022 uh, budget that is needs to be amended. There'll be some changes in the mayor's line, the uh, tax line, the water office line, and uh, because of the increase in the in insurance premiums, and it'll include union contracts. Uh, are there any union raises? Are there any questions? No questions? Nope. I make a motion. We move to adopt. Second. All right. First and second. Clerk, please take the roll call for adoption. Peters. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Hayes. Yes. Hitt. Yes. Blazer. Yes. Smith. Yes. All right. Motion carries. Russell. Yes. <laughs> Motion carries. All right. Uh, one to new business. <clears throat> Ordinance 221-21, a motion to read by title or number. So moved. Okay. All right. Clerk, please uh, read the ordinance. Ordinance 221-21, sponsored by Anthony Smith, an ordinance for strength on job description. Uh, so this ordinance is set up for the BPU office. Um, we have a lady um, that's getting ready to retire. Uh, she's a billing clerk, a very complicated job. So what we're looking at doing um, is trying to bring someone in to be trained under her. Um, so that way they fully understand the job when she does go to retire. Um, so, actually, and I thought this was emergency, but they don't have it listed as an emergency. Uh, I think it needs to be, doesn't it? Rex? Well, that's what I had thought, because she wants to get to that. She needs to advertise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, does anybody have any questions about the legislation, anything like mm -hmm. that? Okay. Um, then I would like to make a motion. Uh, would I need to amend anything, or we? Yes. Yeah. Strength ordinance will come into play once retired person. Yeah. So it would I would think you'd have to. I don't know anything about it, but I think you'd have to raise a strength ordinance in order to hire someone. Well, so. She's just want to advertise, so if we amend it to an emergency, then it would take full force right away, correct? Yeah. So, right, so then she does it right, tomorrow. Right, just suspend and regular, it'd be 30 days. Right, okay. Yeah, I, we do not need issues with our billing. We need to advertise, we need somebody trained, making sure uh, the BPU department is, is correct. So what I'd like to do is make a motion to add an emergency clause to 221-21. I'll second it. Second. 
All right, clerk, please uh, take the roll call to amend. Robinson? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hitt? Yes. Blazer? Yes. Smith? Yes. Russell? Yes. Peters? Yes. Uh, and then with that, I'd make a motion to suspend the three reading rule for 221-21. I'll second. Second. All right, clerk, please uh, take the roll call for suspension. Hayes? Yes. Hitt? Yes. Blazer? Yes. Smith? Yes. Russell? Yes. Peters? Yes. Robinson? Yes. And then with that, I would make a motion to adopt 221-21. I'll second it. All right, clerk, uh, please take the roll call for adoption. Blazer? Yes. Smith? Yes. Russell? Yes. Peters? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hit? Yes. Okay, 22121 has been adopted. Uh, on to ordinance 222-21, a motion to read by title or number. So moved. Second. All right, clerk, please read the ordinance. Ordinance 222-21, sponsored by Brenda Russell, an ordinance for strengths on job descriptions. Okay, this uh, ordinance is for uh, the job uh, strength ordinance, and the change will be in the street department to read. Uh, assistant superintendent, one. Street foreman, one. Street worker, two and one. Not to exceed four with a foreman not to exceed five without a foreman. Are there any questions? Can I just, just read that one more, sir? Is it a motion? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. You just read. And that was oh. the <laughs> And this uh, has an emergency clause on it, so. Uh, uh, are there any questions? I make a motion we suspend the free reading rule. And this has an emergency clause on it. All right, so we should have a motion to suspend. I'll second it. Second. All right, clerk, please take the roll call for suspension. Smith? Yes. Russell? Yes. Peters? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hit? Yes. Blazer? Yes. Okay, a motion to adopt. I make the motion to adopt it. I'll second. Second. All right, clerk, please take the roll call for adoption. Russell? Yes. Peters? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Pitt? Yes. Blazer? Yes. Smith? Yes. Okay, on to resolution 223-21, a motion to read by title or number. So moved. Second. Second. All right, clerk, please read the resolution. Resolution 223-21, sponsored by Brenda Russell, a resolution increasing appropriations. Okay, this appropriation is for the fire department. Uh, it's, uh, there needs to be an increase in the salary line. Uh, they have an employee that'll be retiring and they're gonna need some extra funds for the uh, payout on leaves. And also, uh, because there's three pay periods in the month of February, his uh, uh, month of December, the, uh, his salary line will be a little short. He needs to cover that pay period. And this is an emergency, is there any? Questions on that? On an employee that's retiring, that's yes. a pretty substantial amount, correct? <laughs> uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Well, they uh, they have sick leave payoff, vacation payoff, yeah. uh, both of them, and the third pay period for the entire uh, staffing. Hmm. They're asking for a hundred thousand, and it'll come out of the fire department's own funding. It's not out of the general. All right, so do we have any other questions? One, two, two, three, two, one. All right. Uh, I make a motion we suspend the three reading rule. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. Second. All right, clerk, please take the roll call for suspension. Peters? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Pitt? Yes. Laser? Yes. Smith? Yes. Russell? Yes. All right, and a motion to adopt. Motion to adopt it. Second. Second. All right. Clerk, please take the roll call for adoption. Robinson? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hitt? Yes. Blazer? Yes. Smith? Yes. Russell? Yes. Peters? Yes. Okay. 22321 has been adopted. Uh, <clears throat> one to ordinance 22421, a motion to read by title or number. So moved. Second. 
Second. All right, clerk, please read the ordinance. <coughs> Ordinance 224-21, sponsored by Brenda Russell. An ordinance amending Ordinance 215-21 to reflect a range of salaries of department heads and non-union personnel. Okay, this is a uh, amending the uh, salary lane, uh, ranges for our Uh, department heads and non-union employees so this is to kind of help the superintendents keep pace with the yes <laughs> yeah that's that's the only difference I think is we had that that position assistant street superintendent yeah but you know these these ranges are very important because if we don't keep them you know, you know, in the, you know, as with giving them raises, as the union employees get raises, then our union employees will be making more supervisors, and, and we will have a serious problem on getting department heads. Mm -hmm. So this uh, this change is just to add the assistant super, uh, assistant superintendent position for the street department. So it doesn't change both, the. Isn't it? Hmm? it doesn't it, change the range. It's it, just adding. It's the, both, isn't it? Right, 215. This is, we're pretty much amending 215. Yeah. All we're, doing yeah. Is adding we're adding one, just adding one? Yes. Mm -hmm. Stays the right. same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we're going to raise the salary raise 2%. 2%, yeah. Okay. This just includes the, the, the position for the assistant uh, superintendent of the street department. All right, so this has been amended, and what are our wishes there? I move to suspend the three reading rule. No. Second. And a second. Clerk, uh, please take the roll call for suspension. Hayes? Yes. Hit? Yes. Blazer? No. Smith? Yes. Russell? Yes. Peters? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Get a motion to adopt. Move to adopt. Second. Second. All right. Clerk, please take the roll call for adoption. Blazer? Yes. Smith? Yes. Russell? Yes. Peters? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hit? Yes. Okay. 22421 has been adopted. One, two. Resolution 22521, a motion to read by title or number. So moved. Second. Right, clerk, please read the resolution. Resolution 225-21, sponsored by Brenda Russell. Resolution authorizing the safety service director to enter into collective bargain agreements between the City of London and the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Unit 1428. Okay, yeah, this is the uh, legislation to uh, uh, accept the union contracts for our, our employees. Are there any questions? This does have an emergency on it, so I'll okay. make a motion to suspend the three reading rule. And second it. And second. All right. Clerk, please take the roll call for suspension. Hit. Yes. Laser. Yes. Smith. Yes. Russell. Yes. Peters. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Hayes. Yes. All right. And a motion to adopt. Make the motion to adopt it. Second. Second. All right, clerk, please take the roll call for adoption. Blazer? Yes. Smith? Yes. Russell? Yes. Peters? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Hit? Yes. All right, one, two. Resolution 22621. Motion to read by title or number. So moved. Second. All right, clerk, please read the resolution. Resolution 22621, sponsored by Brenda Russell. A resolution creating a job description. Okay, this is uh, legislation to uh, create the job uh, in within the street department for a assistant street superintendent. Are there any questions? And it has an emergency clause on it, so I make a motion we suspend the three reading rule. Second. Second. All right, clerk, please take the roll call for suspension. Smith. 
Yes. Russell? Yes. Peters? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Pitt? Yes. Laser? No. Okay, I have a motion to adopt. So moved. Second. All right, and uh, clerk, please take roll call for adoption. Peters? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Pitt? Yes. Laser? Yes. Smith? Yes. Russell? Yes. Two two six two one has been adopted. On to our final round table of the year. Uh, let's see here, we'll start with Mr. Smith. Okay. Um, just like to thank everyone for coming tonight. I um, want to thank, uh, um, well, first I'll do this. Thank Brenda for uh, the donation, uh, Revive Baptist Church. Uh, we are sending some guys down to uh, Mayfield, Kentucky. Uh, so please just keep us in your thoughts and prayers as we go down there. Uh, to try to help out with the devastation. I think it's been great. Um, all the people in the community uh, that have donated, uh, we've had things ranging from silverware to Tupperware to baby formula uh, to clothes being donated, and we've had a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, support with that, and so I think that is one thing that's very great about London. Uh, Buckeye Ford, thank them. Uh, they uh, paid for, uh, filled up the vehicle that will be pulling the trailer down there. The next BPU meeting will be December 23rd, 6.30 p.m., last one for the year. Um, do want to thank uh, uh, Carla and uh, Brenda just for everything that they did uh, serving on this term. Um, it was a pleasure to serve with them. I think I will tell a little bit. I was a little nervous about Carla in the beginning, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, coming out, uh, uh, coming in right away. And, uh, but I think you did a great job and really lended uh, your expertise um, and working with those departments, and, and I think they're better for uh, the work that you did. Um, as was mentioned earlier by Mr. Miller, Ward 3 is a meeting. It's at 10 a.m. It's this Saturday. Um, if you live in Ward 3, please come out, uh, give your input. Um, uh, we believe that community participation is what is going to help us get the grant. Um, I believe this a grant like this for a ward had been applied before, um, letters weren't sent out, there wasn't any community involvement, and we were denied all the funds. Um, so, and, and I think we could definitely do uh, great things for that. Um, and that's all I have. All right, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Blazer. Um, I just want to uh, thank all of you and all the city um, workers also that have helped me through this process. It's a pretty fast learning curve to get on your feet try to make good decisions as you go through and I had a lot of questions <laughs> um, and every one of them was answered nobody um, rolled their eyes at me or anything they were happy to help me out and I'm also happy that I think of the council group we've made um, some definite strides for London um, in the last two years and I hope that you guys work together to, to keep that going and I have enjoyed my time here. And you may or may not see me again later on. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Hitt? Yeah, I'd like to thank Carla and Brenda for their service. Um, that can be pretty brutal up here at times, so I appreciate that. And it's a credit to you two for taking that duty on, considering, you know, can be possibly difficult at times. And then I'd like to congratulate John and um, Greg for their election and looking forward to you know, working with the two of you uh, to work for the city of London. Um, Merry Christmas to everyone coming up. So that's it. All right. Thank you. Mr. Hayes. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Um, my gratitude to both Carla and, and my young lady down here, Mrs. Russell. I love you both. Carla, you've been an absolute joy to work with. Uh, you kept some of the best notes, and <laughs> you kept us straight. And uh, Mrs. Russell, you, you're just an inspiration. I love you. I love you both. Um, Going to miss you, and hopefully uh, our paths will cross again, if not here, someplace else. I'm sure they will. Um, I'd like to thank all the city employees, uh, and I'm including council, uh, for jobs well done. Um, 
I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, I know it's probably out of, out of realm, but God sent his son mm-hmm. to save us all. And Christmas, we celebrate that. Um, very important holiday. And I just hope that everybody will remember the true meaning of it this year. It's not the gifts that you get. It's the gifts gifts that you give that you give. And um, I'd like to thank my lovely wife for being here tonight. Um, she doesn't come to many of these, but I appreciate you coming out. You're my rock, and I love you. Um, I think that's all I've got. God bless the city of London, Ohio. Keep us safe. Keep us well. Keep us prosperous. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Mrs. Robinson? Uh, I, I just want to uh, thank Carla and uh, Brenda. Um, many know I'm probably the newest on, on the board. So new kid on the block. Uh, everyone. <laughs> new kid on the block. A new kid on the block. Um, and I just got to see these guys work. And Brenda does, or uh, sorry, Carla does a great job. Uh, if she has questions, she does the research to make sure that she backs up any questions that she does have. Mm-hmm. She's done a great job. Brenda, she's kind of taking me under her wing. Um, we worked under the same committee. Um, I've known Brenda forever. She's been yelling at me for years. So it was nothing new. Um, John and Greg, it, you got some big shoes to fill, but I look forward to working with you guys and, and keep moving forward. Uh, that's the number one goal for all of us in the city is to move forward and, and make sure that we continue to be successful. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, still um, keep everybody in your prayers through all the, the, this holiday season. There's a lot of moving parts. Rich, with your news, we're praying for you. Come out big. Um, just have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. We'll see you in the new year and hopefully New Year to mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. All right, Mr. Peters. Yep, uh, again, want to <coughs> thank Brenda and Carla. Um, we're going to miss you. I would love for you guys to run again in a couple of years. Um, <laughs> um, I'm definitely going to miss the diversity that you two bring up here for council. I think council needs diversity, and yes, unfortunately, the next two years we won't have that. Mm-mm. But um, I really appreciate what both of you have done for the city and uh, at least stay involved. Mm-hmm. So that's all I have. All right, uh, it's been a journey. <laughs> And the road uh, got rough there at the end. <laughs> but uh, I just want to uh, reiterate that, no, Steve, I'm going to be there with you making some decisions. So if nobody shows up, me and Steve's going to make them. <laughs> and uh, uh, for the third ward meeting, it's very, very important that we put this, if we get the grant, that we put it to the proper uh, places so it'll be what's best for the city of London. And uh, I'm going to talk to the women. We have no vote up here for two years. Now, we can't let that happen again. So we got to get somebody to run. We got to get one. Well, you mean it's all right. But we need <laughs> women. We need to step up. We, need, we have no vote for two years. Minorities, we have no vote for two years. So we have to like that. It's good to have diversity. That's the only way we can be successful is if we have diversity because we need all input. And... Uh, so the diversity can comes from the minorities and the women and men all working together. We've got to make this a diverse council. And once again, I want to reiterate, we're only as good as our department heads are. We're only as good as our administration is. We, the council, are not the meat. We are not the meat. Our meat is our administration and our department head. Kenna, you've done an outstanding job. I ask your mom, does she know what she's doing? <laughs> and your mom said, yeah, she does. I said, okay. <laughs> so, and Kenna has done an outstanding job. Bill has done an outstanding job. Uh, the tra- Anthony, every time I see those trash trucks, I just thank you. I thank you. Thank you. And they're smiling. The guys driving them are just yep. smiling and waving. And, uh, and, and we all work together. And I'm going to tell you again, we are not dishonest. We did not hide anything. We, did not, we don't converse. We discuss in committees. And we might see each other out on the street and say something, but we're allowed to do that. We're allowed to do that. We don't hold little sneak preview meetings and stuff. We do not do that. 
and it did not happen in this past legislation, and it has not happened in any other one. So those that are calling us sneaky, and, and we, it's not true. We are not Pat's little imps. If anything, Pat gets mad at us. If anything, Pat gets mad at us. But we work together, I'm telling you, and the name calling and the harsh words, they need to stop. Do not do not do that to the next council. Do not do that. Michael, thank you. Thank you for your remarks. Just thank you so much. And now, I will not be running again. <laughs> I am 72. I will not be running again. So. But I uh, might have somebody in mind that will give it a run. So uh, women, let's step up to the plate. Minorities, let's step up to the plate and make this a diverse council. That's all. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to also thank uh, Carla and uh, Brenda for all of your input and all of the knowledge they brought to the committee meetings because uh, that's where a lot of our work gets done is in those committee meetings. So you're coming to the committee meetings, you're, uh, you've got your input and everything, you still have your vote through those committees. So you know, I still wanna encourage people to come out to the committee meetings uh, so that we can continue to get good work done. Uh, and this has been a uh, productive year even despite COVID. Um, and I'd like to thank council for all their hard work uh, that we've put in to conduct legislation, even though we didn't always see eye to eye. We've been able to set aside any personal and professional uh, differences and work to, toward the greater good. Even though even Pat and I, we, uh, we have our differences, but even through that, we are still able to work together and we've been able to uh, bring the city of London forward. And I also like to thank the community for being more active in their city government processes. I don't remember, because I've been here for a couple years and, and I came to quite a few council meetings before that, but I don't remember many uh, meetings where we would consistently have more and more people visiting the meetings. Usually we have one or two uh, people at all the meetings, but we've had quite a bit of uh, input and uh, community coming to the council meetings and the committee meetings. So it's really good to see that. It's good to see that the community is uh, becoming more a part of that whole process. Uh, so we'd like to uh, just thank you again for that and hope it continues in this next year. Uh, and I'd just like to wish everybody a uh, happy holidays and uh, a, a merry and prosperous new year. A motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn.